Today I'm going to talk about the Chinese word 面子 and it is spelled as M-I-A-N-Z-I. Well-known Chinese words are spelled alphabetically in pin but are also written down in characters. So this is what it looks like when it is written down. 面 means face, but it don't it doesn't mean this face at the front part of my head. It actually means uh, means giving face and a losing face. It means a kind of prestige. It means uh, self wants being perceived very positively in others' eyes. And very interestingly, the first person who talked about mian is an American, and he was an American missionary um, in the 19th century. His name is Arthur Smith. He spent 54 years in China and then wrote a book entitled Chinese Characteristics in which he pointed out means is key to understand Chinese people's personalities. A very typical, a typical example is um, it is very common for a Westerner to use self-deprecating humor to build rapport with others. I still remember like Al Gore in his speech entitled An Inconvenient Truth, standing around the students introducing himself. Hello, my name is Al Gore and I used to be the next president of the United States. And the students just roared with laughter and suddenly he became funny, lovable and the distance between between him and the students just disappear straight away. However, for a Chinese person, because this influence, this concept of means, you need to be perceived seriously and positively by others, by others, especially someone with you know high social status, the person would seldom, if I would not say never, but seldom use such joke to uh, to break eyes uh, with other people because it's dangerous because it will incur face loss in Chinese culture. In China, when people go out dining, it's always the person who proposed to dine out to pay for the bill. And it's inconceivable in Chinese culture for a group of people trying to divide bill or go du going Dutch in a Chinese restaurant because that would incur face loss. Because according to the rule of means, one needs to be and needs to be perceived as being um, generous and kind. Therefore, the suggestion of dividing bills will naturally be perceived as being mean and money-grabbing in that social context. Different understanding about means and face is probably the single most uh, uh, important reasons and causes for miscommunication intercultural uh, interactions. Therefore, to understand Chinese people is very important for a Western person to understand means and how means impact on people's behavior in China. For example, in Chinese press, sometimes we hear the news or we watch the news on the telly when the company goes bankruptcy, uh, the CEO would commit suicide. It's almost not understandable, inconceivable in the Western culture. But in Chinese, that's a big loss of face. And he couldn't really face other people because he has no means anymore. That's why he would rather die. And that's the best case to show means is actually sometimes more important than one's life. Actually, gender does come, uh, become an issue when, it, uh, when we talk about means because people have e uh, different expectations about what a woman's means should be and what a man's means should be. For example, um, in, in Chinese culture, if a woman drinks and smokes, that's a big damage to, his, uh, to her means because uh, she is not expected to do that according to the social rule, uh, while a a man can, you know, feel free to do, you know, smoking, drinking thing apart from excessive drinking because that um, match well with his means. It's very tiring. People always, oh, I'm sick of means, I'm tired of it. For example, a normal invitation accepts acceptance interaction. For example, if I invite you back for a meal and my place as friends, it's, it's normally quite straightforward in a Western culture. But in Chinese culture, it's normally have to involve at least three rounds. Firstly, I initi initiate the invitation to show my generous and then you refuse it because you show you don't want to be perceived as being um, uh, greedy. 
Therefore, I need to reinitiate the offer to show that I'm genuine to making the offer. And then you need to refuse it, uh, refuse it again. And also give me a bit indication because I don't want to cause you too much trouble. And to me, as um, an inviter, a, a person who invites you, then I would reinforce the third time. Look, it's not going to be troublesome. It doesn't involve much work. A lot of things have been prepared. So please do come along. If you don't come along, then I won't be happy. Then you will say, all right, then I will come at this time. So it's, it's a very kind of... Um, energy consuming interactions even just for uh, you know inviting somebody and accept an offer it, it applies the same to giving a gift and accepting a gift so it involves a lot of work and uh, re reciprocating uh, interactions ensue so uh, people do find it quite tiring first time I arrived here I went out with a group of friends British friends to visit another British um, person when we first time arrived first time arrived um, the the, the, the host asked us, do you want a, a drink or a cup of tea? Everybody said, I want Coke, I want juice. They were just so kind of open and straightforward, relaxed, even though they know no more than I uh, with uh, about that host. But my first reaction, very instinctively as a Chinese, I said no. And then he prepared a drink for everybody except me. And then I thought, oh, am I stupid here? I actually want a drink. And it would be really difficult for me to tell him, oh, can I actually have a drink? And I was a bit angry why he didn't ask me the second time. And I was just left there, you know, sitting there without any drink. And everybody was relaxed. And I was just, you know, almost going to be in my tears. I don't have a drink. <laughs>